and welcome to MBS Connections. I'm your host, AJ Hoffman. I'd like to thank my engineer, Abby Young, for doing all the technical work. And I am joined today by some representatives from uh, both Midland High and Dow High School talking about the master plan, uh, as well as Jacob, Klein, Jacob Kane, who is a representative from the city of Midland. Would you guys all like to start and uh, introduce yourselves real quick? Thanks, AJ. Uh, my name is Jacob Kane. I'm assistant city manager for the city of Midland and uh, the project manager for the city's master plan, Midland City Modern. My name is Ella Karbowski. I'm a junior at Midland High, and I'm involved in student leadership. Hi, my name is Francis Borden. I'm also a junior, but I go to Dow High. I'm Carrie Banks. I'm a senior at Midland High, and I'm a student by treasurer and news editor of my school paper. Mr. Kane, you, would you like me to address you as Mr. Kane or Jacob? Call me Jacob, please. Call you Jacob, all right. Jacob, can you describe the master plan real quick and, and just explain where we are so far with the plan? Sure. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, the city is preparing a new master plan, uh, which we've called Midland City Modern. A master plan is basically a long-range view um, of the community's priorities for the future and establishes strategies that we can use to create the type of community that we want to see um, in the future. We uh, have been working with the community on this project for over two years. We recently, uh, back in September of 23, released a draft plan, and we're looking to have that plan adopted um, by the city this June. So we'll be um, wrapping up the planning process and moving into plan implementation um, in the near future. Now, you guys collaborated with the students last spring, I believe it was. Well, uh, throughout the year last year, right? Yep. So we started working with the, the district uh, in the fall of 2022. And we had our first engagement sessions with students in December, uh, which was at Midland High. And then we worked... Um, through the winter and early spring with students at Dow High, Northeast Middle School, Jefferson Middle School, and also with um, students in the elementary level uh, through their teachers. So um, some integration with the second grade curriculum primarily, although we did have other classrooms at the elementary level also participate across the district. Very cool. Kira, let me start with you. How was this plan presented to you? So for me, it was presented to the Middle High Student Council in the Middle High Leadership class. Uh, it was just kind of shown as like, here's the things that we think need to be changed, but what do you guys think about it? Um, I think it was one of the first times I've heard like, we want to hear students' voices and the youth's voices and what will keep you in Midland. Very cool. Um, well, Ello, did you look at this? I, I'm not a big fan of this question, but did you look at this through the eyes of a student leader or a community leader? Yeah, um, so I think that as a youth leader, it's our responsibility to consider how our actions are going to impact other people in the future. And so I really considered that um, as I looked at this. And um, I considered that I am 100% all the time a youth leader, but I'm also 100% a community member. And I think that's really important to consider because I'm also a family member. Of, I have friends, and they are all also community members. So it's important to consider how this will impact them um, and how going forward um, the master plan will impact the community as a whole. What does this mean to you? Have you have you ever been involved in a community plan like this? No, I have not. I think it's really interesting um, to be part of this because being involved at Midland High and being involved in community organizations, it's really important to consider how the community will progress and how we can improve our community. I think that's super important. Kira, what about you? Um, I absolutely agree. I think, like Ella said, like it's really important for us as like leaders to like think of everyone else around us, um, especially as a lot of us are like moving on, thinking about what effects it will have on our family, our friends, um, and if we decide to come back, what that would be like. But in general, just thinking about others. Very cool. Francis, what, can you tell us a little bit about some of the ideas you had uh, back then, back the last <laughs> yeah. year? Um, so I know my class had a lot of ideas. I know a lot of us were really interested in finding and creating like these third party places in Midland, especially for a lot of teenagers, because um, uh, most of my class, I feel like, agreed that there aren't that many places here for us to go to or the places that are available. You know, we've been so many times that we just want something new. So a lot of us talked about that. I know I personally talked about um, creating a lot more 
green spaces, I guess I call them, because I'm also a member of Go Green, which is our environmental club at Dow High. And so finding and creating a city that is sustainable and like builds um, like nature into the factor of it is important to me so that, you know, we have like a good balance. Yeah, absolutely. Kieran, Ella, can you can you weigh in on that a little bit? Some of the ideas you guys both presented. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think uh, for the middle high leadership class, it was very similar. Like we were looking for ways for like a lot of us to feel more engaged in the community, um, especially like a lot of the spaces in the area we don't feel completely safe in. A lot of them are um, less than like nice spaces to be around, or they have like bad reputations. So more just places for a lot of us to feel comfortable and safe and be at, at late hours and that kind of thing. Um, and I also think it's important to consider the events that are going on in Midland. I think that a lot of the events are geared toward either adults or younger children, and I think that we should close that gap and allow there to be more opportunities for teens to feel connected. Um, and I also think that some of, the t some of the ideas we had in our leadership class were focused on connecting Midland as a community and not connecting or not just being like separate schools. It's like we want to connect the schools and bridge that gap so we can feel connected as a community rather than separated. Was there any tangible ideas that you really came up with that, that you can remember from last school year that, um, that stuck out in your brain? I think we had discussed like a teen space or something downtown um, because like downtown's a hot spot, but at the same time, like it's one of those places that has a not super great reputation, but just like a space where it's fairly center in Midland. It's open later hours because a lot of us want to go out at night but can't go anywhere because it's all closed. Sure. Um, so just like a place for all of us to hang out and then it would also bridge that gap between Midland and Dow. and gives us a chance to interact with one another and do activities and all that kind of stuff. Well, so, okay, so I'm curious, what would that involve? Um, I, off the top of my head, I couldn't completely tell you, but maybe just like almost like a living space but for like teenagers, but not living, but like hangout space where like be couches, TVs, activities, all that kind of stuff. Um, almost like a summer camp, but for teenagers on a daily basis. That was a great question, AJ. That was one of the questions that we asked frequently during our focus groups that we held in the schools, um, particularly at the high school level, because we heard this feedback. That was the number one thing on my list that I recall learning from the students through this process was a really strong desire to see more spaces that were curated for um, students, particularly at the high school level. Um, it seemed like across the student groups that we spoke to, younger kids felt really connected in Midland, and the high schoolers related that that was largely their experience when they were younger as well, and it just felt as they got older, there was less connection, and so we, we pushed back quite frequently to say, well, what does that look like? Because I know that when I was a high schooler, you know, the last thing my peers and I would have wanted was a space created by 40-year-olds like me today <laughs> for us. You know, you, you want something that's really self-created. And so we talked a lot about that. And I think as we move past planning into implementation, we'll need young voices to remain involved in this process so that they can help us to create the spaces that are going to be um, attractive and meet their needs um, and not just things that we think as adults are going to work for them, but what actually will work for them. So we're hoping we can continue this engagement and, and conversation over the long term so that those, those voices remain uh, an active like, driver of our, those decisions. So, Jacob, just to make this a, a fluid conversation, did you grow up here or, or are you from somewhere else? Uh, I'm from another community in Michigan. Okay. But I think that's, there's, there's some universality yeah. to what we heard. I, I think... Um, High schoolers everywhere mm -hmm. probably feel like, to a certain degree, their hometown is boring. I don't think that's like a, sure. u a unique yeah. aspect mm -hmm. of, of living anywhere. I think everyone at a certain point is just ready for new experiences. You're growing up. And we do a great job as a community of creating really dynamic young people that have bright futures. And those bright futures might be here in Midland and they might be somewhere else in the country or in the world. Um, and that's a really cool thing. And what we were trying to tap into was even if you're not the grown-up folks living in Midland when you're older, the type of, we want to attract people like you, other bright people that might live in other communities today that'll come here. And we also want to do a better job. We hear from a lot of folks that are, that are older that they want their kids to stay in this community. They want their grandkids here. And so how can we make this a uh, competitive place that people do want to um, make roots in um, if they are from here? 
Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, I, I feel the same way I grew up here, and when I grew up here, I, I felt kind of disconnected, you know, from the community and, and the city, and um, now, you know, as I've gotten older, I'm like, wow, there's so much more to do here now. You know, there's actual activities and stuff, but I can, I can sense that there's probably a little bit of, um, still a little bit of disconnect, because that, that Main Street is a beautiful area, right? Mm -hmm. and you probably want to have some sort of part in that, right? Um, I want to shift back a little bit and talk about your teachers. Uh, Mrs. Albright and Mrs. Berg. Um, Ella, let me start with you. Can you tell me a little bit about how, how Mrs. Albright uh, kind of influenced um, some of the things you, you talked about or how maybe not, but and possibly veered uh, some of the issues and, and things that you guys talked about or brainstormed about? Yeah, um, so Miss Albright, our class is a very student-led class. Um, I think that Miss Albright guides the students. However, she does not directly offer um, direct input because she wants our conversation to be very student-led. Um, and I think that's very important um, as well. But her influence on us is that in class, in leadership class, we have these lessons that will teach us how to grow as leaders and how to um, lead our class and like lead our discussions. So I think it's really, I think her impact has been to teach us how to become better leaders every single day. And that definitely played a role into our perspective on um, looking at the master plan. Um, and then I think just like having that support in the class has really helped us to um, just be open and honest about our answers and what and come up with very um, detailed questions to ask about what we're looking at. Awesome. Kara, what do you think? Uh, I absolutely agree with you, Ella. I think that Ms. Albright is like advises the class, but it's almost 100% student-led. But her influence like is at the roots of the class. So all of us are able to take lead and lead conversations and be like, what do you think about this? And how does that affect you? And then look back and be like, how would this affect other middle high students? How would this affect the whole community? So when we were looking at this last year in the varsity leadership class, we are looking at it as a, how would the people in our school feel? Um, and I think that's just a direct impact of how she has conversations with us and how she's like let us grow in a, as a class. Yeah, Ms. Berg's a, another awesome student leadership teacher. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we have two different advisors. And so last year I was with Ms. Outman and I'd say she definitely does the same thing as you guys were explaining with Ms. Allwright. Like, um, you know, she just, like, lets us talk with ourselves, and then we kind of, like, get together as a big class and, like, discuss out our ideas and listen to each other um, to, like, come to a conclusion or find what we think we want to, like, say to be a part of this. Very cool. So after Braid's story, again, working with Mr. Kane, uh, did this change your approach to other projects that you worked with that maybe outside of the master plan? Ella, let's start with you. Yeah, so we work on various different projects in student council and in student leadership. And I think that looking at the master plan has really helped shift some of our perspectives into like making these events um, very inclusive and looking toward the future of what these, what legacy will these events leave on our school and on our community and on the students, um, which I think is very important. Um, and that this conversation has really helped me to look at that perspective where I'm looking toward the future and looking toward how our actions are going to directly impact other people. Very cool. Francis, what do you think? Um, yeah, I'd say about the same thing. Like, taking this project and moving forward, it's seeing how we as a school can also reach out to our community so that, you know, it's not just the community reaching out to us as a high school. We're doing our part in, like, talking to families and hosting events and putting things on for the entire community and not just for the students at Dow High, too. Gotcha. Kira? I absolutely agree. I, uh, I think after our discussion last year, it really gave me a, a more of a community outlook rather than just a middle high outlook. Um, we ran an event last year for our One Billion Rising campaign called Walk a Mile. And rather than focusing it just on middle high students, we focused it on getting Dow High involved and getting the whole community involved mm -hmm. and getting community like members um, invested in it and like, teaching them about what One Billion Rising is. So I think this gives us a lot of like idea of that like the adults in our community are important, the students, those younger than us, like Ella said, leaving that legacy behind. Yeah. Adding on to that, I think that um, 
focusing on some of our projects, we have started to implement um, connecting with the younger students as well, like the middle school. We've have um, we've invited to them to some of our events at Midland High, which I think is super important because they're the future of Midland. They're the future of Midland High School, and I think it's important to. Um, open them up to the possibilities at Midland High and open them up to the positivity that happens in our school. So hooking on to that, were, were there any kind of um, uh, ideas from the middle school specifically that you can remember that um, you really, really wanted to grasp onto and, and try to embrace? Uh, is there anything you can kind of remember from, from collaborating with them? Um, well, we invited them to our Mr. Midland High performance because that's a very okay. yeah. fun event at Midland High. And I just, I, I enjoyed seeing the younger students having fun and wanting to participate. Um, whenever we asked for volunteers, they were the first ones to raise their hands. And I just think that the determination and like positivity is, is really useful in our school system. And I think that um, it's important to have that optimistic and brave outlook on life. Now, as, as Midland High, did you just collaborate with Northeast or Jefferson? Yeah, so it was Northeast, and I think that okay. we're also um, planning to do a couple of campaigns at Northeast um, just to teach them about a couple of different things. Oh, very yeah. cool. <laughs> Francis, do you remember some of your experiences collaborating with Jefferson then? Um, I know we definitely have some lined up. I'm not sure if we really have, like, done a lot with them at the minute, or I haven't sure, been in those yeah. projects at least, so. Understandable. Okay. Uh, Jacob, uh, were there any ideas that stuck out during the workshops with either high school or middle school? Yeah, so we talked already about uh, integrating young people into more of our um, kind of public-facing facilities and events, especially at the high school level. Um, that came through um, very clearly um, with the high school students. Uh, one of the other things we talked about um, with middle and high school students was uh, our collaborations on drug resistance education and um, at the middle and high school level, we heard from students that they want to see that um, some continuity with those programs so that it's not just a one-time um, interaction in fifth grade, but that there's some carry through, especially as some of those pressures uh, increase in middle and high school years um, so that they and their peers were supported uh, and making good choices. And so I thought that was really interesting, um, both just as a, a reflection by the students, but how... Uh, uniformly, we heard at Midland High and Dow High, at Jefferson and Northeast, um, across age groups, across schools, um, there was a lot of commonality in the feedback. So we really felt like we had we had some really solid feedback that was reflective of the whole community because we were hearing it everywhere. There were some mm -hmm. there were some nuances certainly between different schools and different age groups, but um, even when we looked beyond our outreach in the schools. Just talking with the general public, there was a lot of commonality in what we heard, whether we were talking to someone who was, you know, 85 years old or 15. A lot of those observations about the community and what people hope to see were, were the same, um, which I think is pretty cool. It, it helps us to create a plan that has some consensus around it because there aren't big differences amongst age groups. But what the students could help us to do is really key in on what's it like being a young person in Midland today. So even though as we build out this plan, by the time we really make significant progress, you know, these ladies are all going to be adults. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can make things better for kids in Midland in 10 years or 20 years, um, that'll have been a huge legacy of, of their involvement today and helping to make sure this remains a really great place for young people in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So how will it shape some of the community, future community projects? Well, I think... We've learned that um, one thing that we did with this project overall is we decided that we weren't going to just stay at City Hall and invite people to come to us, that we had to go to people. And so what we did in partnership with the schools was not something that we only did in partnership with the schools. We were out in the community for really two years at parks, at playgrounds, at coffee shops, um, at senior services, uh, anywhere we could go where there were people so that people didn't have to come to us, we came to them. And... Similarly, we took the same approach and strategy with everyone we worked with. So we didn't have a specific engagement strategy for how we were going to have conversations with students and with older people and with the general population. We used the same approach with everyone, um, just understanding that there might be unique opportunities to get specific information from different groups. But we really wanted the conversations as much as possible to be 
longer than just a quick interaction. Um, you know, when we were with the students, it was an hour plus in a focus group, and we had the students in small groups where they could kind of talk things out with each other. So they might, someone might have a reflection that the others didn't, but then they go, yeah, I agree with that. Um, other times they might share something and there might be some disagreement and they got to work through that, which is how government works. We get people together, we get them to share ideas. Not everybody's going to agree, but at the end of the day, you've got to find where the consensus is. And so this was, this was a cool project from that standpoint and seeing different groups of people in Midland, including the students, find consensus together. That's very cool. I, I appreciate hearing that you're, you're branching out and going to the places to, to try to get community outreach. Um, now I might be throwing the, the students here a, a curveball, but can you guys, can you ladies give me a little bit of, was there any discontent or where you had uh, in collaboration with you, either the middle schools or representatives from the city of Midland where you thought like, uh, no, I completely disagree. That's not what we need or we need to focus on this instead. Um, Kira, you're kind of shaking your head. Let me, let me start with you. For sure. Um, I think one thing I distinctly remember talking about was uh, like the, the homeless benches was one thing that was brought up in our student council group. Um, and I don't know a whole lot about this, so don't quote me on this. Um, but sure, yeah. we had talked about the fact that Midland has um, benches that are meant so that way homeless people can't sleep on them. Um, and we talked about maybe making better like resources and that kind of stuff for people that are in that position and also talking more about it because it's a very like niche subject. People don't like to bring it up, don't like to talk about it, especially in like a nice community. Um, so something just to like discuss and be open about and like how do we handle these kind of things. Um, so I think that was one thing that we discussed and had a little bit of disagreement on. Gotcha. Francis, what about you? Um, I honestly don't know. I feel like... Okay. Well, Sorry, okay. I don't... No, it's okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you want, I'll come back to you. Yeah, okay. yeah, come back to me. All right. Hello, well, what about you? Was, was there anything that you really... There was something that just kind of like lit a fire in you and, and you know, I strongly disagree with, with this topic or with this kind of set amount of time that we had with Mr. Kane, and um, uh, I'd rather we focus our time or, or use our time for this instead of talking about, you know, B and C. So I really liked a lot of the ideas that were brought up. Okay. Um, there yeah. was not really a idea that I really disagree with. I think a lot of the ideas um, really aligned and resonated with what I see for the future awesome. of Midland which I think is really great because um, obviously they're going to be executing these ideas, and I think it's great that the community and a lot of the students also agree with those ideas. Conversely, Jacob, was there anything that the students brought up that you you were able to like kind of veto right on the spot? Like, okay, we can't, we can't <laughs> embrace that. I mean, again, this might be put, make, might get cut completely, but. Yeah. Uh, I would say any of the uh, engagement that we had through this process, periodically, we, we kept things really open-ended. So we tried to make sure we structured these communications. We had some prompts with the students and with others that we engaged with, um, but we didn't want to predetermine an outcome with the conversations. So things were left fairly open-ended so the students in their groups could kind of take things where they wanted to take them. Um, and to the extent that we might have... Um, had a response to set expectations that may have just been things that were outside the scope of what the city can accomplish or what the plan is meant to tackle. So maybe things that are specific to the school district where we just said, you know, these are great things that your teachers can help to float up or as student leaders, you can help to affect these changes um, or to push back and get more info about how would we do things, like I said, with the event spaces. So wh what does that mean? You know, tell me what that event space for high schoolers looks like because my idea of what that might be might be really uncool <laughs> and, oh. and you all might not use it. And so, um, you know, we really, like, beyond pushing back to learn more, we really called for the students to take action on that. So if those are things you want to see, you need to engage with the city and come forward. And this can't be the last engagement. You've got to keep coming forward and expressing what would suit the needs of students in the community um, so that you get the kind of things you want. That's really we hoped, we hoped that in addition to getting that feedback from the students, we'd also 
have some success, and it sounds like we, at least in this room, did at cultivating some future leaders in the community and also getting youth engagement in other ways in the community. So if we can get students to come forward and share their voices anytime we seek community feedback, we'll be able to do a better job of planning the community for youth in the future. I was just going to say that's a great gateway for, for community leadership, right? Um, Jacob, is there anything you'd like to add to, to get around the side? I'm going to go around the table too, but Jacob, is there anything you'd like to to add to finish this off? Yeah, so just that uh, the city was very appreciative of the school district's willingness to allow us to partner uh, with the students uh, and collaborate on creating this plan together. Um, I think the student voices have resulted in a plan that's a lot stronger than it would have been without um, that input. Um, and I do hope that it's encouraged the students who participated and even those that didn't to realize that they can have an impact on their community and to keep having an impact um, beyond this project. So we're just really excited about it and glad that uh, the students took the time to really give honest, thoughtful feedback um, to this process so that we could create a really good plan for the community. Yeah, um, I'm so grateful that we had the opportunity to discuss the master plan. Um, I think that it was it was really empowering to be able to speak for our student population as a whole and to like kind of and to look at um, the perspectives of a community member and what they might want to see in the future. So I think it was really impactful for us to be able to have these discussions. Um, and I think that we're really privileged in Midland to be able to have these opportunities to um, improve the future of our community. I completely agree. I mean, I was like, feel so involved with um, being able to help create these plans and talk through them with like the city planners and leaders. And it just made me feel like I have more of a stake in this community and I'm going to be able to make a change that I want to see and that I think will be able to benefit the other students and my peers. Yeah, I think this was amazing because it really gave us a good outlook on, you know, how we can affect our community better and also like what's going on around us. So, so it meant we were going to read, we're going to lead an anti-vaping campaign and a cell phone usage campaign. Um, so we really appreciate it, and obviously all of us in the room like to have our voices heard, so it's really awesome to know that we're being here, heard, but also speaking out for others. Fantastic. Well, thank you all for being here today. I really appreciate your time and, and all of your input. Um, I thought this was a really cool project, uh, kind of unprecedented, right, Jacob? I mean, I, I don't think that we've ever had a master plan before where we collaborated with students, right? As far as we know, this is the first time, but it yeah. certainly won't be the last that's, that's awesome. Um, that was our show. Uh, thank you also to all of our listeners around the district, around the country, and around the world for tuning in. We have launched a district Instagram page, and you can search us by, um, by finding the handle at Midland Public Schools. And if you have a story idea, a photo op, or an event you'd like us to cover, you can email us at communications at midlandps.org. Thanks again for listening to MPS Connections, and we'll catch you again next time.